Well, good morning. And what a fine Navy day. Welcome to the United States Naval War College and the 10th Annual Women, Peace, and Security Symposium. A few notables uh, here, and I, I really don't have the entire uh, list in front of me. It would take probably half the day uh, to share all the notable uh, folks that are in attendance, so thank you all for being here. But in particular, Honorable Sean Coffey, sir, great to see you. General Counsel of the Department of the Navy. Ambassador Eric Nelson, Associate Director, George C. Marshall European Center for Security Studies. Ambassador Amarul Chowdhury, former UN Undersecretary General and father of the United Nations Security Council Resolution 1325. Ambassador Swanee Hunt, founder of the Women in Public Policy Program at Harvard's Kennedy School. Rear Admiral Antoinette Weems Gorman, the Jamaican Chief of Defense and an NWC alum. Rear Admiral Louis Del Carpio, Director of the Peruvian Naval War College, where are you, sir? Also a Naval War College alum. Uh, Major General Retired Barry Seguin, Director of the George C. Marshall European Center for Security Studies. Great to have you here, sir. Commodore Raymond King, Commander of the Royal Bahamas Defense Force. Where are you, sir? Also a Naval War College alum. Uh, Brigadier General Kimberly Bauman, Assistant Adjutant General, Rhode Island National Guard. Brigadier General Tracy Keeger Murphy, Deputy Director of Strategy and Policy for U.S. Space Command. Dr. Valerie Hudson, Distinguished Professor and George H.W. Bush Chair, Texas A&M University. And the list continues. Our CNO Distinguished Fellows, Admiral Guillermo Barrera, great to see you, sir. Admiral Normal Verma, I think, is still in virtual land. He's over in India coming, making his way back. And then Rear Admiral Laura Sanis, great to see you, sir. Panelists and participants, our deans, chairs, faculty, staff, and students, and thank you also to our Naval War College Foundation. We're our War College Foundation representatives. Thank you. Your foundation brings that level of excellence, that margin of excellence to the War College for symposia like this, so thank you. Our presenters comprise the State Department, Department of Defense, three of six regional centers for security studies, as well as senior leaders, scholars, and academics from the United States and partner nations. Along with our resident students, we welcome more than 160 in-person in participants and over 250 virtual participants from 17 different countries. This WPS symposium continues the long-standing Naval War College tradition as the premier institution where future leaders of our nation's militaries and its allies and partners can collaborate on issues of global importance. Our international programs are especially valuable to our global outreach. In addition to enduring the enduring international relationships which are forged in a greater understanding of the perspectives and cultures of other countries which is developed, the WPS framework leverages the power of our service women's perspective, which is critical to the collective effectiveness of our war fighting teams and is a force multiplier as the complexity of our global environment continues to increase. Women have served on or near the front lines in every American conflict dating back to the Revolutionary War. It is critical that we continue to address women's unique challenges in conflict-affected areas, aiming to ensure their full participation in peacebuilding and security efforts. This pillar of WPS ties directly to our mission here at the Naval War College, as envisioned by our founder, Admiral Stephen B. Luce, and I quote, a place of original research on all questions relating to war and to statesmanship connected with war or the prevention of war. Now, the Naval War College came, became the first professional military education institution to hold a Women, Peace, and Security Conference in 2012. We are very proud of that. And a special thanks to Dr. Mary Rahm, founder of the WPS program and former chair, as well as the current chair, Dr. Syra Yamin, and the WPS committee for bringing together U.S. and international thought leaders, scholars, civilian, and military practitioners to guide our collective efforts. The Naval War College continues to be an academic leader in the field as we dedicate ourselves to building future leaders. In recent years, women have represented a growing component of our in-resident student body, an integral part of ensuring that the future of our services includes the intellectual overmatch required to maintain strategic superiority, enhance our innovative advantage, and guarantee our ability to remain resilient in the challenges brought by our ever-evolving global environment. WPS themes cut across the entire peace and conflict continuum and are closely related to the subject matter we teach. 
Integrating the gender perspective into strategic plans and operations can be used to better understand hybrid threats, especially those that target civilian environments, where adversaries may employ multifaceted strategies including disinformation, terrorism, and cyber violence, as well as economic and military tools. Experience shows us that a gender lens is responsive to and helps reduce strategic and operational gaps in countering these challenges. Likewise, gender-inclusive teams in humanitarian assistance and disaster response ensure that our efforts are culturally appropriate and take into consideration the specific needs of vulnerable populations. This, in turn, helps to empower local communities and build greater stability. This symposium aims to provide nuanced insights into why the WPS policy framework matters and to advance its critical principles through enhanced understanding, application, and innovation and problem solving through civil, mill, and international security cooperation, which ultimately will be published in an edited volume, and I very much look forward to reading it. This symposium is an opportunity for us to understand the problem and develop inclusive solutions to improve organizational culture across our nation. As you discuss these issues over the next two days, I want to invite you to think about the disproportionate impacts of conflicts and crises on women in many parts of the world. Recent data from Georgetown University shows that approximately 600 million women, or 15% of the women of the world, live within 30 miles of an active conflict, a number which has doubled in the last 30 years. As we learned in recent wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, the insights and experiences of women are critical to building democratic institutions and restoring and maintaining peace and security. At the Naval War College, we address these issues by supporting the United States strategy on women, peace, and security. According to the Women, Peace, and Security Act of 2017, we quote, must recognize the diverse roles women play as agents of change in preventing and resolving conflict, countering terrorism and violent extremism, and building post-conflict peace and stability. This strategy is designed to increase women's meaningful leadership in political and civic life by helping to ensure they are empowered to lead and contribute, equipped with the necessary skills and support to succeed, and supported to participate through access to opportunities and resources.